So it's really nice to be here. This is our first Moodle Mood, and we have the honor to already talk here. So be kind, and thank you for letting us talk here. Yeah. Um. So today we want to present a few ideas concerning collaborative learning spaces and how to facilitate them in Moodle as educators as well as administrators. My name is Sebastian Palme, and this is Selma Kovacevic. Sorry, uh, my colleague. So. Okay, maybe it will come back, we hope. Ah, yeah, there it is. And we are from the University of Applied Sciences, Vienna, and we're working there as Moodle administrators as well as educators for the teachers and Moodle support as well. Yeah, sorry, okay. Maybe this will work, okay. So, um, connecting learners and enabling student collaboration is becoming a bigger and bigger thing in education right now. I can tell you that as a student and as a teacher as well, because in the last years, we all know, people haven't been having much physical contact, and the connecting is getting much harder. So why should you, as a teacher or administrator, facilitate the collaborative learning? Um, the positive outcomes are obvious in the didactical um, scientific literature. It improves learning processes, it achieves learning goals that you want to achieve, and it strengthens student social skills, which is also part of many curricula. So, but it doesn't come without a lot of challenges. <clears throat> um, in, sorry, in online and hybrid, hybrid settings. So there's no default room like in the classroom where people can meet and there's no clear communication channel, and no, there are some social and technical barriers. Okay. So traditionally, as a teacher, you only had to get the students in one classroom, maybe give them like a little uh, group assignment, and they already naturally start to collaborate, work together. And when you do this in a hybrid or online setting, you really have to think, and you really have to do a little bit more effort to achieve the similar results. Okay, so thankfully we got Moodle, so there are a lot of functionalities and plugins already there that you can use and that you can um, that bring you to this goal to connecting your learners. Um, we already had like quite a few talks for amazing like plugins and tools do this, that achieve this, and there are also like third-party apps that can do a lot of things, but today we want to tell, show you like, um, show you how you can do this with like very simple Moodle um, tools, and maybe you already have all of them on your Moodle server. Yeah. So there are core functions and plugins, as well as like several activities that we want to show today, and Always important is minimizing the efforts for teachers because otherwise they won't do it. And having similar structures and course layouts so that the students know where to define the channels that they can need. So the first example would be our course template at our university. We have this installed for all the bachelor courses and it, when the teachers are getting their courses, this is um, the template which they get and they have a forum for students there, which is already pre-installed and pre-configured, as well as um, the activity hot question, where students can collect their questions. So we have this, and this, the teachers doesn't ha don't have to do anything, so this comes already imported. We have our own plugin for that. And this is an easy way to like, establish a baseline of communication for the students, so they can start collaborate, to collaborate. Okay, so um, the next thing we want to show something more specific, and for that my colleague will show you um, specific requirements that teachers um, wanted to have um, applied for Moodle. Yeah, so. 
Yeah, thank you, Sebastian, for this uh, interesting insight on why you should use collaborative spaces for your students. Um, we had quite a few uh, teachers who approached us with a very specific scenario and requirements, and most of them um, you can see here. So um, teachers wanted to create a space where students can interact, but also find each other way easier. And so some of the requirements were that there were some sort of personalized profiles. So students give information like, for example, it depends on the scenario, but for example, if you want to learn a language or if you want to offer a language that you can speak so you can teach and learn languages together, or for example, if you're a new student and you want to meet new people and you want to make new friends, maybe you want to sort of set a space for people to get to meet each other based on their interests and their hobbies that they share with their personalized profiles, or maybe they share some in insights on their learning processes so they can actually build learning groups and study groups. So that was a very important aspect. And the most important aspect was uh, matching the matching process because the teachers, they, um, they had lots of Excel files, which we all know are very scary. And all of those Excel files included lots of um, information about the students, and they had to actually do the matching process on their own. So that was a lot of work, very ugly. And so this is um, a very important requirement, how the matching process can work without the teachers having to do that manually. And of course, there should be some sort of search function where students can search um, through various criteria and, of course, communication and interaction between students. And yeah, we're just going to dive into an example on how we actually did it. So this is, maybe you can take a few fractions out of it because this is a very specific uh, scenario that we already built in some of our courses. So when it comes to creating personalized profiles, we um, suggested the uh, activity database where students can make entries based on the scenario. So for example, in this case, this is just a very small um, fraction of the whole screenshot, but in this case, uh, students are able to give information about which languages they speak, which languages they offer to speak, and which they would like to learn, and then they can match with others who maybe want to learn the language that someone uh, already speaks. So this is, um, can be done with the database. And when it comes to the matching process, uh, this can also be done very well with the database activity because students can go through the existing entries and they can check whether they find someone who seems interesting to them. So it was important to shift the whole matching process from the lecturers to the students. And hopefully, if they make a match, they will uh, find, a, find a good partner here on this, uh, in the entries. And then um, the next step is when you've went through the entries and you found someone, you may want to um, create a group. So there's a group choice activity that we use. You may notice that there are um, those tiles in, here in, in the last few slides. Um, so these tiles um, is, are implemented in the courses as well because when you click on those tiles, you, it immediately gets you to the activity, so immediately where um, the students uh, should be because when you think of the database activity, it's a bit more complex to navigate through and with this guideline, we um, hope that when people click on that, the students, they immediately get to the entries or um, all of the entries are um, shown um, as a list. So they don't have to go through the whole database activity, which is a bit scary too. Um, yeah, so when they found uh, someone they can match with, it, the idea is that if they didn't find someone, you just join an empty group and then you hopefully uh, other students join as well. Uh, but if you found someone you think is might interesting to you, then you can, of course, join them. You can see um, their names and you can join their group. So that's the idea. And it's really important to um, combine, if you think of the activities that you want to use, to also combine them together so that it makes sense. That's why we have the tiles and also dis additional descriptions so that the students know what they need to do. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the next step would be maybe to chat with, your, uh, with each other so that you can also see whether 
you connect or not. And for this purpose, of, we have we use very basic the forum, and it's really important to um, include in the settings that you want to use separate groups because we are working with groups, and otherwise you will see all entries, and that's maybe not that in interesting to you. And the next step is to this might, all of these things are of course optional, but um, it might be interesting for students to share their materials, their um, scripts, their notes, and therefore we recommended um, the shared um, folder, the student folder, and students can share their material here, and it's also very important to use separate groups, of course, but it's, this is important for all activities um, that follow. And what we recommend as well, but this is only for a smaller um, amount of students, um, maybe to, so we have an additional um, tile that if you click on it, it leads you to another forum and people can ask um, their teachers to set up a big blue button um, activity for them. Uh, this is, again, only recommended if there are not too many students in your course and teachers will immediately uh, be notified via email. Mm -hmm. And. Yeah, and one, um, the last step that we had was some sort of motivation for our students to actually do this whole process. And um, the idea was to um, give them bonus points if they actually attend a quiz. So the students, this is the student quiz activity, all students in the group, so you also have to do separate groups here, they um, commit their questions and then they have to actually attempt the quiz, and then after they attempt the quiz, they will get bonus points too. And um, it's also recommended if you want to do this whole process, maybe to work with activity completion, to say okay, you can only do the quiz if you are in a group and you know set some restrictions as well. So this is a very quick uh, go through to all of these um, process because we don't have uh, that much time, unfortunately. But um, this is again, um, Summary, um, this is all the, the activities that we use and again it's very um, important to use these um, based on your own scenarios and we also had some uh, lecturers who implemented this already and in one of the courses, in one of the language courses, we had about 60 entries in the database within the first week so um, it's it shows that students are interested to also connect um, online and to actually give them the space to connect uh, in Moodle and in a virtual room as well. Yeah, so um, we hope that this was helpful to some of you and maybe you can connect your students uh, in a way that they probably wouldn't have met um, otherwise. Thank you, and now um, time for questions. Thank you. We have about... We have about two minutes for questions, so please raise your hands if you have questions. Hi. Um, I'd like to know which course format you use for this entire course, because I saw tiles, and I wasn't, wasn't sure whether it was a tile or not. So for this course, we used the basic topics format, and we included the tiles. Uh, we created them using HTML, so that's not something we wanted to do our teachers, but as we don't have to set it up just one time, so we thought we're doing it in HTML, so they look pretty, yeah. But, um, yeah. but you can also use the, t um, the tile form, because there is a format with the t uh, creating all the tiles for yourself, so you don't need to do that. And maybe you um, can add an additional tile um, with, because we have a, um, because those are just tasks that we created on our own, we have also a subscription in the course. But if you only want to use the course format with the with the tiles, then it may be helpful to create an additional tile, and you put all the information there as well for the students. And maybe work with the activity completion so they have to read it before they can go ahead. Yeah. Thank you for the question. Hi, um, um, I have more and more schools and students who ask for audio and video instructions on assignments uh, as different um, steps of the uh, instructions you give them. Any ideas on how to incorporate audio and vi or video um, comments or instructions for students in this? Okay. Okay. 
Okay, just a uh, quick answer. I think you can, in every, like, in every part of our course, you could add like, audio and visual material. And even the students can, at this student folder, can add like, audio for, to communicate. I think maybe you have to work out which way the best, but I think it's easy to include a video there as well.